हेलो फ्रेंड्स लेट अस लर्न अबाउट ए न्यू टॉपिक टुडे आई एम डीलिंग विद ऑर्थोपेडिक्स राइट नाउ सो इन द ऑर्थोपेडिक्स आई एम राइट नाउ डिस्क्राइब डिस्कसिंग यू विद यू अबाउट द पैथोलॉजिकल फ्रैक्चर्स सो ए फ्रैक्चर इज सेट टू बी पैथोलॉजिकल व्हेन इट अकर्स व्हेन द पर्सन हैज सम डिजीज सो बिकॉज ऑफ दैट डिजीज द बोन बिकम्स वीक the disease may be anything it may be cancer it may be uh, a mild osteoporosis to a cancer so the disease can be anything so because of that disease the bone becomes weak so because of this weak bone it is prone to fracture so that is called as pathological fracture so even bone becomes weak and this fracture in between it there may be a component of trauma which is associated with it which is very mild even mild trauma may cause fracture in this situation so what are the causes of pathological fracture here basically the bone becomes weak by a disease right so let us learn about the major causes of pathological fracture the most common cause of pathological fracture is osteoporosis so in osteoporosis it is it mainly affects the bones uh, of uh, vertebrae first vertebral bodies and then sometimes it also affects the uh, it also causes fracture due to fracture of neck of femur or colli's fracture so all this can cause osteopor can cause uh, pathological co- all these are caused due to oste- osteoporosis so first let us learn about the causes by you know uh, by um, classification so uh, these causes can be first classified into two types one is the localized diseases which causes fractures which are localized to that area itself or generalized diseases even some generalized diseases may cause fractures so what are the localized diseases which causes fractures locally it may be due to inflammation or it may be due to neoplastic that is cancers tumors may be benign or malignant so if it's inflammatory it can be pyogenic osteomyelitis or it may be tubercular osteomyelitis right both of these may cause inflammation and if it is neoplastic it can be of two types it can be due to benign tumors or malignant tumors if it's benign tumors it can be giant cell tumor giant cell tumor or osteoclastoma or it can be enchondroma if it's malignant it can it is again divided into primary malignancy or secondary malignancy if it's primary it can be due to osteosarcoma or evings tumor if it is secondary it can be due to lung cancer or prostate cancer or kidney cancer or breast cancer or any genital cancer like ovarian cancer uh, genital cancer so all this may cause secondary is leading to localized disease which co- which may predispose bone to fractures so now let us learn about the generalized diseases which causes fractures in my next page so generalized diseases causing fractures so these generalized diseases can be divided into two types number 1 they can be from congenital in onset that is from their childhood from their birth or some diseases can be acquired due to some other uh, things so congenital it can be due to osteogenesis imperfecta it is a disease which occurs uh, which is of four types or five types and this disease results in uh, weak bones non formation decreased mineralization of bone and there is one more which is dyschondroplasia this dyschondroplasia is also called as olier's disease so these are the major congenital causes of uh, um, 
pathological fractures in acquired it can be one number one osteoporosis and osteomalacia in congenital i forgot to tell about one cause which is osteopetrosis we will learn about all of them in their respective classes and in acquired it can be due to rickets or scurvy these will weaken bone and this can be due to uh, disseminated malignancy of the bone so it's not in one bone but it occurs in all the bones uh, like uh, multiple myeloma is the best example for this and then diffuse metastatic carcinoma next what is the miscellaneous causes the other miscellaneous causes include number 1 paget's disease of bone and the other cause is polyostotic fibrous dysplasia so all these are the generalized diseases which causes uh, osteoporosis which which may sorry which may predispose a bone to fracture so these are based on uh, the causes but uh, do you think all these causes occurs in all the age group i don't think so right so you can divide these causes based on the age groups also so classification of pathological fractures so pathological fractures are classified based on their uh, ages age of onset so what type what is the causes for diff- for in different age groups so if you wanted to learn the cause at birth the best cause at birth is uh, congenital right so it's osteogenesis imperfecta is the most common cause then at the age of 0 to 5 years one osteogenesis imperfecta is also common here so along with this one more is common uh, which is uh, osteomyelitis so these two are common at the age group of 0 to 5 years right so at the age group of 5 to 20 years osteomyelitis is more common along with that simple bone cyst and primary bone malignancy so these are common at the age group of uh, 5 to 20 years now the next age group is 20 to 50 years so at this group the bone cystic diseases are bo- common uh, malignancy is common and also osteo malacia is common and giant cell tumor so these are common okay and mo- if if we wanted to know uh, the causes more than 50 years then these are unique it may be due to osteoporosis and multiple myeloma may occur and secondaries in bone can occur right so all these are the classification of pathological uh fracture based on the age right mm. so now uh, let us learn how do you diagnose it so diagnosis of this is based on once the fracture is sustained uh, with a with trauma you can directly think of traumatic fracture unless the injury is very uh, injury is large when compared to the force then you can think of uh, pathological fractures and also whenever there is a fracture which occurs without any trauma then suspect the pathological fracture that is one and if you question the patient then the patient says that there is some discomfort in that affected bone 
so history of any discomfort in the affected bone is important right so that is one which is important and the patient uh, may be sometimes diagnosed of certain diseases which produce uh, fractures so past history and present history of diseases and medications are important right so if we know these then it's very easy for us to make the diagnosis so sometimes a patient may present with pathological fractures itself and at that time the diagnosis is very difficult so if presented with pathological fractures then that is difficult so uh, these the, how, the in, by this way you can classify you can diagnose the pathological fracture so how do you treat it so treatment treatment of underlying pathological fracture detects on mainly two things consists of mainly two things number 1 treat underlying cause why do why did he get the fracture so if there is some cause which is resulting in that fracture so you will have to treat it or else the patient will again come back to you with the recurrent of fracture recurrence of fractures right so the second one is assess the capacity of the fracture to heal so even if you unite the fracture the fracture or the bone should have that capacity to heal so based on these two uh, should be important while treating the fracture you should do both these things so if the fracture is caused by a generalized bone disease if it is caused by i have said that the bone diseases can be divided into um, one is localized or generalized localized is pertaining to the bone generalized is some systemic disease resulting in uh, uh, the uh, bone manifestations if the patient has generalized disease so generalized disorder then uh, you should uh, do conventional method of treatment right uh, if a fracture uh, is present at the site of a benign tumor if there is benign tumor in localized if there is benign tumor then there may be delayed union and if the fracture is due to it occurs in osteomyelitic bones if it occurs in osteomyelitic bones then uh, there is delayed union and sometimes there may be non union also and if the if the if the fracture is due to meta metastatic bone disease then uh, always there will be a non union they never unite because of malignancy right you will have to treat these conditions first uh rather than trying to unite them unless and until you treat these conditions the fracture do not unite in this situation so what is our aim to treat the pathological fractures the aim is to increase the process of union by bone grafting if there is bone cyst you can graft a bone during that uh, on that place right or if there is a benign tumor you can remove the tumor and that part of bone and you can graft it with other bone right so that is one aim and the second one is mobilize the patient by surgical stabilization of the fracture or else this can lead to stiffness or rigidity of other joints or weakness of the joints right so you'll have to mobilize the patient with surgical stabilization of the fracture you'll have to stabilize the fracture but you have to move the joints uh, which are uh, above the fracture and below the fracture to prevent rigidity 
so by this you can treat the pathological fracture the best treatment is treating the underlying cause if the cause is treatable so this is about the pathological fracture so in our next class we will learn about the injuries which occurs to joints ligaments muscles and tendons thank you guys for watching my lecture if you feel something is inadequate in this lecture please comment it in the comment section if you feel i can add something to this lecture even then comment it in the comment section thank you for watching my lecture thank you